What's up, YouTube world? It seems like it has just been forever since I've made a video. The last couple months, I have been the busiest I've probably been in half a year. Um, attended the A&A show in Chicago. Sales were absolutely ecstatic. Uh, met up with some friends. And just overall had a great show. Two weeks prior to the ANA, we did another show in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So back to back, very, very busy. Um, been working on a couple deals recently that are without a doubt some of the um, biggest deals I've ever done as far as paper money goes. We do have back a bulk submission today. PCGS banknote. I know. Guys, I have stuff at PMG. Been there since May. Hasn't been touched. I, I mean this in the nicest way possible. I just can't do any real dealer business at PCGS or PMG at this time due to lead times. And... Um, I have no, there's no one to contact. There's no one to even call and say, hey guys, you've had this, you know, since May. Get this, get this taken care of. So, um, and I don't have time to sit on the phone all day and talk to somebody on customer service and say, this is my injustices. So, until they fix some stuff over at, uh, NGC PMG, we are going to continue to use PCGS Banknote. Um, Partially because they have probably, without a doubt, the best customer service I've ever received in uh, paper money. So we're gonna start out, get this, get this rolling. Pretty, pretty busy, uh, pretty busy submission here. Lots of different stuff. Start out with. It looks like a couple little teller ink spots right there. Silver certificate, UNC 64. It might be fiber clusters. If I had a loop, sometimes you get these really bright red fiber clusters. I'm gonna look at it closer. It does have the appearance of a fiber cluster, but I think it is a remnants of, of an old bank stamp or sitting on top of a bank stamp. That's hence the no cue, because the next note in the same same run, 64Q, nice note. These are 1601s, so 28A, there's one in gem, there's one in 63. Yeah, nice little run, that must have been the top note, so it's remnants of a bank stamp, most likely. 67 or 64 serial number 67 here's the bottom note most likely flat 64 yep there it is there's the rest of that stamp so must have been a small band here we have there's a few experimentals in this order sometimes when i just want regrades i just cut them out and include the uh, straps so they can see them 28B, St. Louis, 63Q, 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 that looks a lot nicer than a 63 to me, 1934 funny back, 1606 DA block, 64Q, there's a 28B, 64Q, 34 5 ca block a little bit better a little bit to collect the blocks on 34 plane absolutely tough really nice centering absolutely gem grade very very well centered on the back really good registration you can see it up and down nice nice gem grade 34a chicago 64q nothing Nothing special. 34A Chicago 65Q. 28B. Um, VF20. Just a nice circ note. Easy to sell in a holder. Holdridge Nebraska Type 210. Tough. 
bank for type 2's graded XF40 nice note very fresh 28A in 65 there's some more of that same run looks like it was just randomly put in Hastings Nebraska serial number 96 it's kind of a cool serial you could flip it upside down and still have 96 short snorter with lots of signatures Wow. Uh, PCGS went ahead and notated minor stains. Um, kind of an odd comment considering it's covered in pen. Um, I showed these three. Now we're at those notes. So we have a 55Q. Ooh, downgraded 55Q. And another downgrade, 53Q. So, that's the lesson you learn here. They're very nice notes. Regardless, they are, they do have two downgrades. So, when I cut them out, I did not like them for 58Q. I thought they were a smidge handily. That's kind of the reputation some of these non-CLCT notes get. So... Mineral Wells, Texas, VF25. Look at that cashier signature. That's wild. Cirque note. Um, short snorter on a Malta, government of Malta note. Lots of signatures there. 21C and AU55, Canada. Good looking note. 28A, BA block, so a little bit better block. VF35Q. 28A, Minneapolis, dark green seal, and VF30. Better, better note. 34 plain and 63Q on the $10 silver cert. Very thin margins on those 10s. 1950 Minneapolis Star Note in VF30. Um, tougher note. Very low population. 28A, 64Q. Some more from that same run. They're just sporadic. I don't, I don't know how that happened. Another one, 64Q. A T69 and 63Q. Really good color. That'll be... That'll sell really quick. Fives are... They just don't... It seems that you don't see a lot of fives grade 63 or 4. Western Exchange. Uh, Bishop Hill Colony Obsolete. 64. A lot of them have minor paper toning. So they don't EPQ them. 236 silver certificate and VF35 Black Eagle. That's just a nice original note. The Somerset Worcester, Worcester, Maryland. So us Midwesterners would call this Worcester, but over on the East Coast it's Worcester or Worcester. A cool note 748 serial. Here's a two T70 and 63. No Q. A lot of them don't Q because they have uh, a little bit of fading going on. They should be a little bit brighter in color. The Bank of Penn Township. This is actually my personal note. This is an altered um, note from a Nebraska. I believe if you've ever seen any obsoletes, but the Wabi Bank, I believe that's what it's altered from. So, altered plate. $2 silver certain VG10, just a nice, honest circulated piece. Here is a $1 legal tender missing the top right corner. Choice find 15. Missing corners. 
two dollar Canadian choice AU fifty eight. Yeah, you can see the right through there. Nice two thirty eight star and VF thirty. Good looking note. Super, super, super tough note. 1874 FR19 with the red overprint. Choice fine 15. Um, minor discoloration. I'm going to say that's on the reverse right here. It's just a little bit blue. But other than that, the note is pretty well honest. It's a very tough note to not find tape together and missing pieces. FR80, 1880, and VG10. Another super, super tough note. I want to look at this. I just... I, I love these 18, 1875 and 1880 series. Uh, 1s, 2s, and 5s. And they're just... Here's another one, 1880, FR81, and VG8. Just super, super tough notes. I offered these notes raw, and somebody told me that I was crazy, and I don't think I wanted that much. I think it was under 200 bucks a note raw, and uh, I think the sheet is actually higher than what I was offering. 90, 931B, so you got the small district letter over here. It's kind of the giveaway. VF30. One of the most popular vignettes ever. They're harvesting wheat. What else we have? 911C. So you have the extra district letter up there, I believe. No. Oh, it's the position. It comes over here. I get confused. I believe the extra letter is on the red seals. Somebody will correct me. I'm not, I don't know everything, and I don't pretend to know everything. 1914-20, Kansas City. Good looking note. A lot going on on the back. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Ships. This one is Burke, Houston. Here's a Richmond White Melon. Another great note. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Another VF25. That was for the... I believe that was just the first box. Hope all is well in the world. Hope everybody's had a great summer. And uh, we're able to go and do some things you wouldn't normally do. Whether it be a vacation or... I've spent most of my summer working on projects. Here's a lottery ticket from 1815. Pretty unique piece, but... Uh, very collectible. A lot of people call them colonial lottery tickets. Here's a Little Falls, Minnesota note. VF-25. Atlanta, district number 6, choice XF-45. Chicago, Illinois, AU-58. Chicago, Illinois, AU-58Q. I believe these are sequential. Another AU58Q. Here is a 1928 $10 gold cert VF30. A lot of these don't have, won't have comments. Here's a narrow margin fractional with the CSA watermark. Let's see if we can find it to show you. Sometimes you have to tip it just right. And I can't find it. Hmm. I'm going to hold it up to a brighter light. See if I can see it. 
It does have specimen on the reverse. Either way. So what they mean by CSA watermark is this paper originally was confiscated. Uh, it was actually it would I, confiscation is probably not the correct term, but the paper shipment was en route to the south when the northern army intercepted the shipment and they used it to print U.S. Federal Reserve on. You can kind of see some of the watermark right in here. But that's how we have federal notes that were printed with CSA watermarks. St. Louis in 64. Gold certain VF20. 28B St. Louis at 55Q. Oh, now we're in some, some cool stuff. Camden, Arkansas. Fine 12. D DW Fellows. We have a contemporary counterfeit from Philadelphia, PA. VF30. That's a cool note. Here's a Cuba Royal Lottery ticket. 63 detail. Probably going to be stained. Stained. Imagine that. Pretty cool. Columbia ticket. 58Q. Another Columbia ticket, 58Q. Here's another Columbia Exposition ticket. That's what 64Q. Here's a Children's Special ticket, 64Q. And then we have the Chief at 63Q. We have Washington in 63Q. Ben Franklin, 64Q. And then this is one of the toughest ones. This is called Handle, the music ticket. That's in 64Q. And then, let me see if we can get Mr. Lincoln to drop down. He moved in shipment, but you can see he's in 64Q. And then... The regular Columbus on the Colombian ticket is 64Q. 237 star and VF35. No comment. That's pretty cool. Black Eagle and VF35. Nice note. A 229 Black Eagle and VF35. FR36 star and find 12. Two thirty three in VF25. Nineteen seventeen in XF forty five. Looks like an honest three fold XF. What I mean is well two fold XF, so you have three panels. You know, one, two, three. 1173 Gold Cert and VF20. 1187 and VF25. Educational graded VF25. Mr. and Mrs. Washington on the back. 1187 in VF25. 234 in VF20. Just a nice, honest and circ note. FRBN 1918 1. The Green Eagle, VF35. Another Black Eagle in VF25. Ooh, 236 Mule. Tough one. VF25. I believe these are the last two or 236s. So, a lot of people ask me about Mule, non-Mule, and how do you know? I'm going to show you. 
here's the non-mule, right? Yep, non-mule backplate is 31.53. Here's the mule backplate. It's located right there, 59.79. 1907, five and VF20. Is that a public? Oh, it is a public engraving error. That's cool. 871A Chicago and AU50 stains. A little bit of stuff right in there. I'll look at it a little bit closer. Huh. Odd. Looks like just a little circulation dirt. 1919A BF30. St. Louis, Burke McAdoo, and VF35. Bank of Athens, Georgia, VG8 details. I'm going to assume it's going to say tape repaired internal split edge in the internal. I mean, there's obvious. It's got lots of splits in it. St. Albans, Vermont, Franklin County Bank, VG10. A little bit of contemporary annotations on the back. 1864.5 and 55Q. This is a treasury note from the New Orleans Municipal Municipality. It would have been printed prior to the 1850s. They have beautiful artwork on them. does have a little bit of ink burn. Um, I was having this discussion with someone earlier. And the reason they have ink burn is because there's iron in the ink. And the iron oxidizes. And that's what you're left with. So that ink burn's probably been there for most of my lifetime. And then some. 1173 and VF30. This is an Argentina Casa de Moneda note. Casa de Moneda. From Buenos Aires. It was a very tough note for me to figure out the pick number on. FR90. This is just a really nice 1907 and BF35. I love it when the ink is so bold you could see it through the backside. That's not all series are printed like that. FR91 and BF35. You can see there too. Another uh, post note Bank of Commerce in New Orleans, Louisiana. This one's for a dollar. 50 PPQ. Look at that boat. The vignette of that boat and the woman are just absolutely amazing. Another city of New York, New York municipal, you the municipality note. This one is for fifty dollars. This would be from the city of New Orleans. This is actually a remainder. It was never filled out. Well, that's the uh, bulk order I got back today. Um, I've had other orders come in. Nothing super crazy. Um, lots, I've been doing lots of high denominations, which those are mostly, you know, turn and burn scenarios. Um, as far as what I'm buying right now, I, I'm actually getting ready to work on a very expensive small size deal. So... Um, there's probably three or four thousand notes in that, and um, I'll keep you in touch. Here, couple, couple teasers. Here's one of the notes that I had come back recently, and here's another one. So, five hundred dollar star notes. Definitely not notes you see every day. This was fancy serial number at three thousand star. So, all right.
And with that being that, I hope you enjoy the video. Try to get back to you in a few weeks, hopefully, with some more new goodies. In the meantime, I have lots of inventory to get stocked and priced and get in get on the on the website. We've still been doing a lot of uh, sales on whatnot. So look for us in the future. And I hope everyone has a good day. Like, subscribe, follow. Shoot me a message if you need be. Have a great one. See ya.